Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Tweefers Tech. Now today we're going to be looking at mobile gaming, uh, specifically around uh, cloud-based streaming, uh, maybe Project X Cloud, uh, Google Stadia, or Stadia, however you pronounce it. And you know, what kind of accessories are we using and what can we use? Today I'm going to be looking also at the Razer Kishi, which is a controller that wraps around your smartphone, providing it's got a USB Type-C port. Now, what you would be using if you didn't have one of these is maybe, I don't know, like a Bluetooth controller. Uh, this is the GameSir G4S. It's very reminiscent of an Xbox controller. Um, I'll give you an idea of what this looks like. A lot of people have controllers like this for mobile gaming, or maybe they use their Xbox controller or PlayStation controller and they add on a clip. This one pretty much comes with a clip and you put your phone on like so. Um, I'm using the Note 10 Plus. It's quite a big phone and although this does work, it connects via Bluetooth. I can basically access um, a, you know, a handful of my games that do support uh, third party controllers. My emulators, they work fine. Uh, some of the Need for Speed games work. And some of the third party developers on the Play Store do allow third party um, Bluetooth controllers for like uh, GTA Vice City. Um, the problem being is, um, and also it does allow you to use Xbox streaming, um, and it is compatible. The only thing is, I wouldn't really class this as a, a portable device. It is portable, but you're not going to fit this in your pocket. You need to put this in your bag. It's quite chunky. If we've got something that looks like a Xbox controller, um, it's, it's not something that you really want to carry around. And although a lot of people play mobile gaming in this kind of format, it's just not that stable. This can come off quite easily, as you can see. So I must admit, I've had this controller for a year as a as a gift. Um, but if I'm honest, I haven't really used it. Um, what I have been using is the GPD XD Plus. This is the packaging, and uh, you may have seen one of my videos in the past. It's a Android gaming tablet that's very reminiscent of Nintendo DS XL. Um, it has a fairly decent version of Android, but I don't think it's anything more recent than 7, so actually that is kind of dated. But basically the stuff that this came with had um, some really cheap UI looking thing, and I, I got rid of all the bloatware, put my own Android launcher on there, I think I used Apex on Nova Launcher, and you know I put my emulators on there, as long, you know, along with some of the media apps that I like to use, as well as games that do support um, third party controllers. Now it's a portable device, I can fit this in my pocket, I wear slim cut, uh, slim fit jeans and it does fit fine. You have all the buttons, you have all the triggers, um, but it's not great for Project X Club because you can't push the uh, sticks down. And it's not that comfortable for the more intense games. Uh, if you want something purely for emulation purposes, you know, anything pre-PSP, this is perfect. It is a really good device. Um, but with um, Project X Loud coming along, I've been experimenting with different devices that can really utilize xCloud. And I've come across the Razer Kishi. So we'll have a look at this. This is a little bit different. It's not a traditional Bluetooth controller. Um, it's not a Bluetooth controller at all, basically. So you can see when you turn this around, you have these two clips. This comes undone. And I've always kind of favored these wraparound controllers rather than the clip-on ones because it feels like you're holding an actual gaming device. Now this looks a bit flimsy at first, um, but what you do is you take your Android phone. Now this is compatible with pretty much any Android Android phone that has a Type-C port in the middle. That's the key reason or the key thing that allows your phone to be compatible. You can't use your case for most of these phones, but what I would recommend is putting a skin on the back because these bits here could potentially scratch your phone, especially if you've got a glass back like mine. I mentioned before I'm using the Note 10 Plus and I have used it for the last year um, ever since it came out and I'm going to stick with it because this fits so well. Um, I've decided to use this phone as my main gaming device when I'm not on my primary console at home and as you can see that fits in real nicely. It goes into landscape mode so it feels more like a, a portable console, you know it's like a combination of a, a, a more recent version of PSP and Nintendo Switch and once you put this on there's a little bit of flex 
but it is really stable. So when you have a further look, you can see these has got these uh, vents that basically access the speakers from the phone, so the sound comes out there. You've got uh, a charging port here, a Type-C port, so you don't have to actually charge the controller. You're only ever charging your phone. Um, fortunately, my phone has got a decent battery. It comes with fast charging up to uh, 45 watt fast charging. Sorry, not fast charging, just 45 watts on the wired charging. Um, so, you know, that's, that's all you really need to charge. It's just a bit of plastic, really. But when you're connected to your phone, the Type-C allows a reduced amount of latency, which is that delay from the message that you send from the buttons to the phone. I'll give an example. I've just loaded up PRG, which is basically like a Netflix version of ROMs on emulators. And I've just loaded up one of these games just to give you an idea how well the latency is. Uh, let's see, what do I like to play? Final Fight, that's one of my favorites. I do demo this game quite a lot. Never gets old. Just turn that down a bit. See, it's pretty good. There's obviously gonna be a little bit of latency, but significantly better than any Bluetooth controller and you'll see the difference straight away. And it feels much better to hold. It feels like I'm holding a dedicated gaming device. So I'm trying to play the game while looking at the screen from my phone. Just don't do as well. So I'll come out of that. I'll show you another one. I'm trying something a little bit older. You may recognize this one. A bit of Metal Slug. Here's a D-pad as well, which you might prefer in some games. I must admit, I use the analog stick more often than I used to. And it feels great, it really does. This is the best experience I've had since the Phone Joy Play, which was a controller I invested in on Kickstarter, but they're not around anymore. That's all good. And I think with Razer, you know, they're a well-established company. They've brought out accessories like this before. I think the the recent one before this was a Jungle Cat. That was specifically to only a few handful of phones. Whereas this one, you can pretty much use on anything uh, that's Android and has that Type-C port. Uh, let's try something from the Dreamcast era. There we go, ready to rumble. Come on. And so just to give you an idea, um, the PRG app, these are the um, the ROMs, sorry, the consoles that you can actually emulate. Um, I might have mentioned this app before, but you know, you've got at least three to four generations of consoles that are emulated on PRG and this controller works perfectly on all of them. PSP, Dreamcast, not a problem and anything before that. It just absolutely breezes. But I think the true test uh, to using this controller is going to be Project X Cloud. So let's give that a shot, shall we? Let's see. So if you are new to Project X Cloud, it's at the uh, alpha stage coming onto the beta stage, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. This will be um, coming to an end if you aren't on the, um, so I think it's some access group where you can sign up to and it will be available on uh, Game Pass Ultimate. I don't know what those prices are, I haven't actually explored it, but I will be having access to this for a few more days. Um, just to remind you, you have two options. You can access Project xCloud, which is basically a, a list, kind of like a Netflix service of games. Normally first party games, there might be some third party games, but you've got the, you know, the heavy hitters here. Let's give you an idea of something. Why don't we play a bit of Master Chief Collection? 
obviously if you've got a decent connection they're recommending the five gigahertz connection i've got a a, a dual band one two point is it two point five and two point seven as well as five and it works absolutely fine i've tried this on the five g connection as well and there's no real issue it's never perfect but it's a really handy playing this uh you know when you're out and about and obviously it's just at its early stage this is something that will continue to receive uh, development and software. All right, let's try a bit of uh, Halo Combat Evolved, the original, the silent cartographer. Master Chief Collection is a really good example, of giving you an idea of what, how first person games work on the controller. Skip that. No. Alright, here we go. A little bit rusty. Oh, get my Call of Duty controls mixed up with Halo, it happens all the time. I must admit, games like this aren't really suited for portable gaming, but this is as good as it's going to get. Just to give you an idea, really. I'll just show you a few more seconds and we'll try another game out. But you can see the controls are working fine. Might be a slight delay. I don't know if that's just the sensitivity controls I need to alter. Next up is Forza Horizon 4. Let's see how this works. So apart from xCloud, the other option you have is console streaming, which basically connects to your uh, Xbox One console. Now I've only tested this on my Wi-Fi, I don't know if this works out on 4G or 5G, so if anyone does know, let me know please, that would be quite helpful, I haven't tested that out. Um, but I think if your console stays on standby mode, I don't see why it wouldn't be able to do that. So this in theory is going to access your dashboard. Whereas Project X Cloud only had a selection of certain games that were available, this actually allows you to access your, let's say, your full library, whatever you've got downloaded on your um, dashboard. So you can see there's quite a variety of games there. Something for everyone. All these games all work without any issue. So, what have I been playing lately? Tomb Raider. That's not on xCloud. But it is on console streaming. So we'll give that a go. Oh, not a good start. So that's a little taste of xCloud, console streaming, emulation. This does also work with um, a few um, Android games. I think I've got an application that you download, and it is the uh, Kishi application. Um, this doesn't really do much other than tell you what's compatible, um, so which is quite useful. It's identified a few, like I said here, GTA, uh, GTA Vice City, Limbo, Minecraft Works, and I've got Riptide, Renegade. 
but there are some games that it wouldn't necessarily recognise, like PRG, the Spider-Man game, Amazing Spider-Man game that has uh, controller support. So this gives you an idea as to what's supported, but it also helps you navigate around the phone. I'm not sure if people would actually use this, but you can scroll around, go to your applications, go to Twitter. It's quite nice to look at things in the landscape mode. Um, I don't know how often I would use it to do that other than play games, but it's there if you want to. So I've had this for a few days now, and you know I'm really pleased with the build quality. Um, clicky thumbsticks never disappoints. It's the little things really. You've got your home button, your back button, your start button. Um, you may notice the colouring on these buttons are slightly different. A lot of us are used to A being green, B being red, uh, etc. Y should be yellow and vice versa. Uh, a little bit confusing, but it's not the end of the world. Um, happy with the triggers. They're all good. Nice little uh, Razer logo there. It is a bit flimsy at the back, but when the phone's in there, it feels surprisingly stable. Um, and, you know, battery on current smartphones or flagship phones aren't really an issue. And if, you're, if they're supporting fast charging, you know, you, you won't be too far away from a charging, plot, uh, charging port. So that's not really an issue. I can use this as my dedicated gaming device now. I feel like it's capable of pretty much playing anything I throw at it. So... I'm playing on my Xbox, I'm playing a game, and I need to go out, I can just pick this up, sign into xCloud, and continue where I left off. And that's the benefit of cloud gaming, and that's why I see myself committing to uh, Game Pass Ultimate to take on those privileges. Whereas in the past, I would have settled with a dedicated gaming device. I feel like this is uh, maybe a little bit dated now. The processor, the internal specs... Um, are a little bit behind and it struggles with PSP and Dreamcast games and you know it's only a 720p display which isn't bad but you know you can get a better display on smartphones so unless you want to just play classic emulator games uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep this but it is good just for that so I still recommend this but I don't see myself using it so I might sell that as well as my third party controller, the GameSir controller, it's really nice, it's got a rubberized texture um, but you know it's not portable and I've hardly ever used it. If you're comfortable and you prefer to play with these type of controllers I do recommend it. Uh, the latency is pretty good on this as well. Um, but overall, the Kishi is the way forward. It wraps around the phone, it makes it feel like a dedicated gaming device but you know you've got the convenience of just using your phone. It's a no-brainer for me. Um, it's a lot of money, £80. I managed to get this second hand for £60, so I, I was fairly comfortable with that. Um, I do recommend it. Putting it away is a little bit awkward. Haven't quite mastered it. There we go. It's quite light. I can fit that in my pocket. Obviously, you can't use it as a Bluetooth controller. It, it is purely a Type-C connector that hooks up to your phone. Uh, but I'm really happy with it. I do recommend it. It's great for um, online gaming. And I appreciate you tuning in today. I'm probably going to do a few more videos displaying what else you can do with this. Uh, but yeah, ask me any questions. If there's anything I missed out, uh, feel free to uh, give me uh, give me a line. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned to the next episode of Tweefers Tech. Take care. Bye-bye.